Hey, what's up everyone? It's Kevin Rumpel here, Paralympian keynote speaker, creator of the Resilience Toolbox. And in this video, I wanna chat with you about the top five lessons learned while completing the 75 hard challenge. Now, if you aren't familiar with the challenge, the premise is that uh, this was a mental toughness challenge created by Andy Frisilla, which many people will see as a physical challenge where there's a lot of before and after photos of someone out of shape versus getting into shape, but the challenge includes so many different uh, components that require mental toughness, require mental resilience. And so if you've never heard of the challenge before, uh, the tasks that are required of you on a daily basis for 75 days in a row include two workouts a day, 45 minutes each, one has to be outdoors, you need to drink a gallon of water a day, follow a diet, no cheat meals, no alcohol, and take a progress picture every single day for 75 days straight, no excuses. And so I heard this, heard about this challenge for a long time um, through Andy's podcast called the, what used to be the MF CEO project. Now it's called the, uh, now it's called Real AF. And then I saw a couple people I look up to taking on the challenge, Dan Martell and Taki Moore. So, that was back in November and two things were happening. One is that um, I was actually dealing with some a period of de depression myself. I was just kind of getting down in the dumps and was looking for something to like re-inspire me, reinvigorate me after um, moving to a new city and living on my own and living in isolation. And then secondly, I was inspired by these people I looked up to. So I decided to start the challenge. And so what I want to do is just take you through um, the top five lessons in this video. And if you want to click the link in the description anywhere to a blog post, I go into greater detail about what it was like to go through from start to finish and the fact that I actually tried this twice. I, um, I attempted the first time and on day 20, I had to quit. And then two days later, I restarted it and did the entire program start to finish. So I technically did, I technically did um, it was 98 days from start to finish with a, a short gap in between. Um, anyways, so let's get into it. Top five lessons. Uh, number one is that this program is going to teach you how to prioritize your time differently. So for me, that meant, uh, we have less time in the day. If you got to do two workouts a day, non-negotiable, then you have not just the 45 minutes for the workout, but the time it takes to get ready, the time after the event, uh, after the workout, maybe there's some travel time. Like if, uh, for example, I'd go for a drive to go for a hike on a trail. And so easily, extra time is getting eaten up each day. And for me, I had to prioritize my time differently. Uh, you know, where am I going to focus? Um, what tasks am I going to put at the top of my list? You know, when I'm set to do something, what's that level of commitment look like so that you don't beat around the bush in getting started or being effective during your time and when the, when the task is done, how long does it take you to uh, switch to your next task and be most effective throughout the day? So when you take on this challenge and you'll have less time in the day, it's gonna force you to think differently about how you spend your time, how effective you are in your time doing what you're doing. You know, maybe even like who you choose to spend your time with. If you have less time, to catch up in the evening with, with someone, or maybe if you wanna invite someone to go on the outdoor walk or exercise with you, who do you choose to spend that with? Because it's not so, um, there's not so much time available, and so the challenge really forces you to think about how you prioritize your time differently. That's the, that's the uh, first takeaway. Now the second takeaway that I discovered is that you're stronger than you think. And this goes, what I've discovered is this goes both for um, your physical toughness as well as your mental toughness. So for myself, living with a spinal cord injury, there's been multiple times in my life where I felt like I had hit a plateau. Uh, it's been f going on 15 years since I um, broke my back and was paralyzed. I was never supposed to walk again. And long story short, I got back on my feet. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, again, click the link in the description. Love to share with you more about that journey. But uh, for the purposes of this video is that, you know, four years after my recovery, I felt like I hit a plateau. 
until I had discovered uh, Paralympic sport. So when I ended up discovering Paralympic sport, I made Team Canada in sled hockey, competed for five, for five years, um, helped earn a bronze medal at the Paralympic Games in Sochi, Russia. And at the end of that five-year Paralympic run, I felt like that was a plateau until I started to just work out for my own well-being. And then I strengthened my legs and my core in ways that I hadn't while I was competing in sport. That felt like a level, a, a new level reached. And then from the 75 hard challenge, again, I feel like I've reached a new level in my personal fitness. Now, at the same time, from all that I've been through, through learning how to walk again, excelling in high-performance sport, um, in my book, Still Standing, When You Have Every Reason to Give Up, give up Keep Going, I wrote my autobiography, it talked about my dad also being paralyzed. Uh, my dad took his own life um, by suicide. Uh, I went through post-Olympic depression. You know, there's been many moments where I felt like giving up, where I had to really exert mental resilience, um, develop a resilient mindset, exemplify mental toughness. And even though I knew I'd, I'm already resilient, is that the challenge forced me to discover uh, new levels of mental resilience and just the small minute details of where we will fool ourselves in a talking yourself out of a challenge. So for example, the small things such as like in the challenge, you need to, if you're, you need to work out 45 minutes and there's multiple, multiple times. It's like I go for a walk, I go around the block or go on a trail. I get back towards my vehicle and I think I'm like, oh, that was 45 minutes, but there's five minutes left on the clock. And so I knew that in order, not only in order to complete the program, uh, truthfully, that in order for me to sleep well at night, I needed to make sure I always did that last five minutes or even if it was 90 seconds. But the default in our brain is to think that it doesn't matter. That it doesn't matter to worry about those extra little details. And from keeping the commitment to pay attention to the details, to continue to push yourself beyond your comfort zone, to stick towards your goal, is that you discover new levels of resilience, new levels of mental strength, and then that turn into physical strength that you may not have otherwise discovered by keeping your commitment to your commitment. And so the challenge really, I found, continues to help teach me, as it will help teach you, is that we are stronger than we think if we don't shy away from adversity. Okay, number three is learning to learning what to let go of and so for me what that meant um kind of circling back to the first point about learning to prioritize your time differently is that i need to let go of some things that were not serving me and to be specific for me what that meant is i needed to let go of instagram now I love documenting as much as I can about my life and my journey, but here's a couple examples, two things real quick. Um, one is that where I live, I find the internet to be pretty atrocious, to be honest with you. I absolutely hate it. Um, even if I'm on my data, it feels like it just takes forever to upload things. And so there was many times, especially early on in the journey where I was documenting the journey, which I wanted to do, but as, I'm, as you're sitting there just waiting for something to upload or you have an error and you got to redo it or the video cancels. It's like, I just literally saw within minutes, 10, 15, sometimes 20 or maybe even 30 minutes of my day getting eaten up trying to upload a video to share the content, which I really wanted to do, but I knew that I needed to let go of that because having less time in my day, I start you start to ask yourself, what are your priorities? And so for me, I had to let go of Instagram. And then I started focusing as I knew I needed to don't, I know what I needed to do for such a long time uh, is focus more on LinkedIn content because I, 90% of my business is um, through B2B, not B2C. And so it forced me to let go of something that was not truly fully serving me to then focus on what is most important 
And by letting go of that, which doesn't didn't serve me or ha- does not serve me to the same degree, that in turn, I found myself again becoming more effective, more productive, um, learning more even about my customer because I'm spending more time on a platform where they live for me to understand their problems, uh, their language, and the, discover better solutions than my customer needs because I was willing to let go of something that didn't serve me. So the third key lesson, as I talked about, is really understanding where you need to focus your time t- ties into the first lesson. And in turn, be, you become more effective. Okay, now principle number four is that purpose plus difficulty equals happiness. Now, what do I mean by that? For me, again, going back to, as I was describing in November when I was really not feeling well, I, um, in a short period of time, I just kind of felt like I'd kind of hit a low point again. And so in this new COVID reality that we've all been living in, So many of us have been, so many people are still looking for uh, some direction, some guidance, um, something to, something or someone to be accountable to or accountable for. And I know some some of you are probably saying, well, I've already got too many responsibilities. I want things to let go of. But when we think back to like a lot of the, um, what I help organizations with is creating uh, an ideal week a schedule that they that you can adhere to that creates some boundaries for you to uh, find your personal time to prioritize self-care and create a greater sense of well-being that you commit to so that you can be at your best to then go on to help and serve others to perform at their best. And in turn, you produce greater results. You help create a, a greater uh, team, great organization, it's it's a spin-off by prioritizing your own self-care and your well-being first. And so as we're looking for something or someone to be accountable to so that we can create the boundaries in our personal life, excuse me, is that I found by adopting this challenge is that I had to leave my house twice a day. Well, I could do the one workout in the house, but twice a day I prioritize exercise and or getting outside, connecting with a friend, calling someone, reading 10 pages of a book every single day. Every single day, you're fueling your mind. You're following a diet. You're hydrating yourself by what you drink, uh, how much water you consume, and you're consuming zero alcohol. And so, (laughs) so when you think about everything that encompasses a a wholesome approach to your well-being physically and mentally, is that this will help give you a purpose of something to follow that is difficult. And so purpose plus difficulty equals the happiness because now you have accountability. Now you have healthy physical habits. You have healthy mental habits. And instantly, as soon as I took on that challenge, yes, it was difficult, but the purpose and the difficulty immediately brought me the happiness to help get me out of the funk and give me something to pursue on a consistent and daily basis. Tip number five is to simply get her done. Now, what do I mean by this? There's two examples I'd like to share with you. Number one is when I was training for the Paralympic Games in Sochi, Russia, my trainer, Jeremy Steinbach, used to, when I would show up to the gym on days where I didn't feel like uh, training, I would say, Jerry, I really don't want to be here. And he'd look at me and he'd say, well, you know what? Today's probably just a get her done day. Doesn't mean that it's going to be the best workout, but let's get her done. And then the second example about how that came back to me again later in my life is that when I was publishing my book, again, if you want, you can grab a free copy on my website, kevinremple.com. You can download the ebook for free or you can pick up a hard copy on Amazon. Is that... When I was writing my book, I'd written the manuscript in like 12 weeks. 
And all of a sudden I found myself sitting on it for three months without publishing it because I was too worried about the details about names and a couple other things until finally my book coach Les said to me, he said, Kev, he's like, why don't you just, just get her done? Remember done is better than perfect. Just get it out the door. Um, a friend of mine, Lisa also said, she's like, why don't you just change the names? Bob becomes Billy, Sue becomes Sally. And once I did that, I just changed the names literally in that process. It was like within like 30 minutes, I had re-edited my entire book and I was ready to hit publish because I had just got her done. Done is better than perfect. And so as you go through this challenge and you think about the days that you might want to quit, is to remember that done is better than perfect. Not every workout needs to be the best workout ever. A lot of this just has to do with just showing up in life, just showing up on a daily basis. That's where the mental toughness comes in. That's where you learn the lessons is just by showing up on a consistent basis. And so when you think about maybe this difficulty, the purpose plus difficulty and how it equals happiness is that just apply the simple principle of get her done. You're going to have many get her done days, but that's going to help get you past and over the hump on those days where you may want to quit. So as a quick recap, five tips that I, five lessons that I learned from competing in the 75 hard challenge. Number one is that you learn to prioritize your time differently. Number two is that you are stronger than you think. Number three is to learn what to let go of. Number four is that purpose plus difficulty equals happiness. And number five is to always remember to focus on get her done days. If you need to, call it a get her done day. So if you'd like to learn more, dive deeper into these lessons and the journey where I talk about the days where I wanted to quit, I talk about the two different attempts because I did this once for 20 days and I had to stop and then it restarted two, two days later. And uh, then I did the full 75. Uh, I go into detail a little bit further about the diet challenges I face with an autoimmune disorder where my nose flares up and I can't breathe. If you have any other challenges about or obstacles you think you might encounter that would prevent you from following through with this challenge, I encourage you to check out my website, kevinruppel.com, and in the blog is where you can watch or read about the details. Um, but with anything else, I'd just like to encourage you to give it a shot. If you are willing, you will discover new levels of mental resilience in the process. You'll experience a physical transformation, which is not even remotely as important as you'll experience from the mental transformation. And from that, as I continue to encourage you, uh, in my keynote that, about the hero mindset is that when you focus on the small things that make a big difference on a daily basis, like you'll experience in the 75 hard challenge, is that by doing that, you too can become a hero in your own movie. So with that, take care. Look forward to seeing you again. Leave any comments you have. I'd love to hear from you. And we'll see you again in the next video. Cheers, guys.